In this lesson, we'll take a look at Oracle offerings in the virtualization sphere. Virtualization is an extremely hot topic in enterprise IT right now, primarily because of its association with what's called cloud architectures or cloud computing. We all hear about the cloud or moving to the cloud, and virtualization is an important part of that. But it's important to understand that virtualization has been around for a long time. Its beginnings go all the way back to the days of mainframes. And in fact, mainframes are still used today and they still rely on virtualization. For our purposes, virtualization is the act of creating a virtual resource that could be interacted with as if it were a physical resource. You may have heard the phrase, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. But this isn't true with virtualization. A virtual machine looks like a physical machine and we can interact with it like a physical machine, but it's not an actual real server. Virtualization can refer to several computing resources, but for our purposes, we're talking about hardware virtualization. We can define hardware virtualization in two categories, workstation virtualization and enterprise virtualization. Workstation virtualization involves a single machine. However, on that machine, we can run any number of different virtual machines, which can even run different operating systems. We'll revisit workstation virtualization shortly. The most mission critical type of virtualization is enterprise virtualization. Enterprise virtualization involves running many different virtual machines across a finite set of physical machines. So how can this help us? Let's look at an example of this. Let's say we have three physical servers at our disposal. This limits us to the CPU, RAM, and disk of these three servers. What if we have a need for more servers, like a situation where we want to run multiple application and web servers connecting to multiple different database servers. Without virtualization, we're forced to buy and configure more physical servers. This isn't always cost effective, since our need is simply more servers for separation, not because they're maxed out in terms of resources. What if it were possible to change those three servers to look like 50 servers or 100 servers? That's what virtualization enables us to do. We use virtualization software to make them run together and then create multiple virtual machines, or VMs, that share resources across the three physical machines. Using this architecture, we can create as many virtual machines as we need, limited only by the resources available to those three physical machines. Oracle's product to accomplish enterprise virtualization is Oracle VM Server. Oracle VM Server allows us to take multiple physical machines, enable them to act together, and create any number of virtual machines, all of which look to the user as if they were separate physical machines. Each has its own virtual CPUs and memory, and each has its own virtual disk drives, as well as things like virtual IPs. Using Oracle VM Server allows organizations to use their existing hardware configurations more efficiently, eliminating much of the server sprawl that drives up the cost of enterprise IT. The second type of virtualization, workstation virtualization, is a similar idea on a smaller scale. With workstation virtualization, you can run a number of different operating systems on a single hardware system. Let's see an example of this. The product you see here is Oracle VirtualBox. VirtualBox is freely available via download from Oracle. With VirtualBox, you can run many different types of operating systems, including multiple different distributions of Linux. In fact, VirtualBox is probably the most widely used software program to test new operating systems. Let's say you want to learn Linux, but aren't sure which distribution you can use. Do you use Linux Mint, Red Hat? Rather than choosing one without testing it, why not try it out as a virtual machine? So as you see here, we have a number of different operating systems that are available to us. These have all been set up that I've set up myself. Oracle Linux, Linux Mint, there's a Windows XP. This is Oracle Solaris. So let's see what these look like. Here's an example of a Windows XP virtual machine. Everything about this and how we interact with it would appear to be a physical machine. But in fact, it's a set of files residing on my physical host machine, which is actually running Windows 7. Here's a virtual machine of Linux Mint. Again, everything about our interaction indicates that we're on a physical machine. This has particular value to us for the purposes of learning Oracle. You learn better by doing, so how do you learn Oracle Database? You certainly have the option of installing it on your home machine, but what if your home machine runs Windows and you want to learn Oracle on Linux? You may not want to erase Windows from your home machine. 
Instead, why not install VirtualBox and create a VM for learning Oracle? This way, anytime you want to work with Oracle, you just start up your virtual machine. When you're done, you close it. This lets you separate out your enterprise software from your home machine and allows you to learn without the fear of harming your home computer.